Service is starting. Oh, right. It's my turn this week. Hey, CC. I'm Nathaniel from Genesis Fellowship. I didn't see you there. I guess that's something we've had to get used to over this past year. Not seeing each other. I know for some of you, it's been a time to slow down and reflect. Catch up on projects around the house, and yet somehow still not find time to read the Bible. And for others, it's been a time of trial and hardship. I know it hasn't been easy, but Christ never promised us that a life in Him would be. In John 16, 33, Jesus told His disciples, In this world you will have tribulation, but take heart, for I have overcome the world. I know some days it must almost feel as if you don't have any strength left to make it to the next. And that's okay. God told the Apostle Paul, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. So we don't have to endure in our own strength, because Christ is strong enough for us. I don't know what this next year will bring. I can't promise that things won't get worse before they get better. I can't even promise tomorrow. So let's make the most of the time that we do have. Find opportunities to help those in need. To share the gospel with those who haven't heard it. To show God's love to our world in desperate need of it. God willing, we'll be fellowshipping in person soon. But in the meantime, please join me in preparing your hearts for worship. Good morning and welcome to the English worship service. The call to worship this morning will be from Psalms chapter 37 verses 1 through 6. It reads, Do not fret because of evil men or be envious of those who do wrong. For like the grass they will soon wither, like green plants they will soon die away. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Delight yourself in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in Him, and He will do this. He will make your righteousness shine like the dawn, justice of your cause like the noonday sun. Here we can see that the psalmist is telling us that no matter what life circumstances you are currently experiencing, we need to trust in the Lord. We need to commit to God through our obedience and worship Him with our whole being. So let's do that this morning. Please join me in prayer. Lord, we just thank You for Your words of truth. Help us this morning to be still and know You are God. We trust Your words, Your love, and Your Holy Spirit to guide us. And Lord, we ask that You forgive us for our sins as we worship you both in spirit and in truth. For we pray this in your Son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's all stand together and worship. I cry out. I cry out for your hand of mercy to heal me. For you are good to me. 
I cry out. I cry out for your hand of mercy to heal me. I believe I need your love to free me. Oh Lord, my rock, my strength and weakness come around. For you are good, for you are good, for you are good, for you are good to me, for you are good, for you are good, for you are good to me. Hungry, I come to you. Hungry, I come to you. For I know you satisfy. And I am empty, but I know your love does not run dry. And so I. When peace, when peace 
like a river attended my way in sorrows like sea billows roll whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say it is well it is well with my soul it is well
Let us pray. Yes, indeed, our gracious Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for the way that you've loved us. We're so broken and needy. We have turned and strayed from you. We have fallen short of your glory, but you never gave up on us. You continue to love us. You carried the weight of the cross, the curse of our shame, you died and rose from the grave. You are our Savior and our Deliverer. You are full of grace and mercy. We praise you and we lift you up. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of technology that although we cannot meet in person, we are still able to worship online in one spirit. We're so grateful for our brothers and sisters on our PA team for their tireless effort and sacrifice behind the scenes to make this possible for us. We thank you for them. Please let them know that their labor is not in vain. Lord, this moment we want to lift up those who are suffering. There are many. First of all, we lift up victims of winter storm down in ta Texas. Many are still without power, suffering from extreme elements. Lord, may the relief efforts get to them quickly. May you provide for them, strengthen them, help them in this great time of need as they try to put their lives back together. We lift up those of us who are coping with this ongoing pandemic. For many of us, the challenge goes beyond the physical, but emotional. Lord, only you know the extent of our suffering, the intense stress, the depression, and loneliness. Lord, please grant mercy. Strengthen us in times of our weakness. Comfort us in our pain, in our struggles. Lord, we pray for Pastor Bob this morning as he brings us your word. We thank you for how you have used him, how you have been leading him, and for the burden that you have laid on his heart. We pray for your anointing upon him. We pray that you will speak through him Use him this morning and this morning's message to encourage us, challenge us to grow closer to you and to trust you more. And now we pray the prayer that, Lord Jesus, you have taught us to pray. Our Father who are in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Thank you, Nadine, for that wonderful anthem. She is such a talented individual. Right now, I'd like to list some of the important announcements. You'll find more details of these announcements in the bulletin online. The first announcement is that we will begin a new Sunday School series today called Balancing Politics and Faith. It will all begin at about 10.50 after the service. Um, and it will start with the fellowship time. Please join us on this topic that has been so controversial recently. The next announcement is that next Saturday, the 27th of February, from 6.30 to 8.30, we will have an opportunity to have Zoom time with Bob Doe and his family. This will be a time of encouragement, sharing, fellowship, and well-wishing. And lastly, please read the other announcements in the bulletin because they include the praise and prayer items from the church board. It includes kid clubs scheduling as well as the various methods of giving to ECC. Now let's prepare our hearts and mind to receive Pastor Bob Doe's farewell message. Good morning, church. And welcome to my last sermon as a pastor of ECC. I'm sure this has come as a surprise to many of you. And first off, I want to just say I'm sorry that I was not able to speak directly to many of you uh, leading up to this sermon. But hopefully today you'll get to hear directly from me now and understand the portion of the journey that God is leading me and my family on. But before we start, let's open with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray that in uncertain times where so many things may keep us physically and relationally divided, we are reminded that you are our good shepherd and that we are your sheep. So Lord, I pray as you gather us that you'll bless our time together. Lord, we ask that your spirit bring us together even as we are physically apart. We pray that you'll be honored and glorified today as your people gather in worship and listen to your word. We pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So today's sermon is less of an expository teaching on a Bible passage and more of a reflection on God's leading in my life. Please know that stepping down as a pastor of ECC was not an easy decision. We have shed many tears as we considered this next step. But God was clear to me, Eunice, and the family. This would be the close of this chapter of our lives, and we would be stepping in obedience to the next chapter. I hope to share my understanding of God's leading, um, my reflection on the kingdom of God, and I will close 
As one of the elders asked me, with some parting thoughts and insight for ECC to consider in my absence. The sermon outline will be God's promise, an unexpected journey, God's kingdom call, and finally, thoughts to consider. Brothers and sisters, God never promised that our journey with him would be comfortable and easy. It does not say that anywhere in the Bible. In fact, there are instances in the New Testament where people met Jesus and they were so excited about what he was saying that they said they wanted to follow him, to become his disciple. But Jesus gave them a dose of reality. Jesus said, if you wanted to follow him, you would have to be willing to leave your father and your mother and everyone behind in order to be his disciples. You may not even know where you'll sleep for the night, where you'll lay your head. Jesus' point was that the cost of discipleship was a high one. We see this in the Old Testament too. Isaiah 42 verse 2a says, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. Now, the imagery of vast water in the Bible is often related to death or judgment. When we think about waters, the flood comes to mind, but also the stormy waters that we read about in the New Testament. And this idea of passing through water should be an understanding of death. It invokes certain imagery, but it should also remind us of the story of Israel walking through the Red Sea on dry ground. This idea of certain death was replaced instead by the miraculous deliverance of God, by God, for the Israelites, into life. Israel was saved by God through the waters, and they began a new life as God's chosen people. Brothers and sisters, this idea of passing through the water is a foreshadow for us as well. It's a foreshadow of the waters of baptism, where we go into the water, into death, and reemerge into new life. Baptism represents the new life we all have in Christ Jesus. So we see here, actually, the passage in Isaiah 43 actually opens with this. But now, this is what the Lord says. He who created you, Jacob, he who formed you, Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. This speaks of a God who knows us, who calls us by name. We are his. We are redeemed, and we are his children. The promise here that we see from God isn't a perfect and pain-free life. Rather, God's promise is that we will be in relationship with him. We are no longer strangers or enemies, but we are his adopted children, co-heirs with Christ to God's kingdom. Amen? But in the meantime, while we still face floodwaters and storms of life, we are, not, we are no longer blown about as anchorless ships. Instead, we are given this promise of God's presence, his friendship, his love to carry and sustain us through it all. This is a lesson I've learned for the past 42 years of my life and definitely in the last 20 plus years of ministry. Now, before I get to the next chapter of ministry, I should start at the beginning. When I was a young man, I had many plans for my life. There was a lot of expectations laid on me as one of the first to go to college in my immigrant family. I was attending the University of British Columbia and things looked bright. Then God stepped into my life in a profound way during a Christian winter conference which took place in Three Hills, Alberta, which is literally the middle of nowhere. It was at that conference I knew I had to explore what my faith meant to me in a sincere way. I was unsettled, and I knew I had to follow God's leading. I had to know what he wanted for me. This led me to drop out of UBC, much to my parents' objection, and to go to Prairie Bible College, which is located in Three Hills, Alberta, still in the middle of nowhere. 
It was during this time at Prairie that I grew in my faith and understanding of what God wanted for me. During my second year, I made a commitment to God that I would serve him. Again, I had plans. But this time, I had a burden to serve God, and I thought I would serve God in world missions, particularly in Japan, since I had gone there as an exchange student when I was 16 years old, and I had a love for the Japanese people. So I made plans to go and intern at a church in Japan during my junior year of college, as an internship was required for my degree. Now, from my perspective, I had a willing heart, I was ready to go, and I wanted to be a missionary, reaching out to people. But my life took an unexpected turn. During my second year, I was part of a touring choir that came to ECC in the summer of 2000. Now, um, in case you're wondering which one I am, I am this fellow right here. Um, I, I just figured I needed to point that out because I don't quite have the same physique as I did then. Now, for those of you who know me, uh, for those of you who know me, um, you should know that I don't, I don't really sing. Uh, but I unexpectedly joined this choir because I was hanging out with a guy on my floor, and he went to the audition, and somehow I was roped into auditioning as well. Well, long story short, I made the choir, and we went on tour, and one of the stops was at the Evangelical Chinese Church. Now, the Evangelical Chinese Church didn't have a real connection with Prairie Bible College, if not for Uncle Ed Shi, who, again, was an unlikely Prairie alumni, somehow ending up in this school in rural Alberta, even though he was from Hong Kong. And this was actually a picture of the ECC sanctuary, uh, where we sang. Now, that day when we sang at ECC, it was my turn to share. And I remember my words. Uh, that's me on the right, by the way, in case you're wondering. Um, and uh, as I was sharing that day at ECC, uh, I had said these words. I'm not too nervous to share today since I don't expect that I'll see you all again after this. Boy, was I wrong. I saw, you know, obviously I ended up at ECC, and many people still remind me of my first words, um, that I wasn't going to see them, and how wrong I ended up being. So anyhow, Pastor Sam asked me that day if I would be interested in coming to ECC. Now, remember the plans that I had for Japan? Right before the tour start, those plans actually fell through. We went on tour, and I had no internship in sight. And just a couple weeks after, I was being offered an unexpected internship at this church that I knew nothing about. Pastor Sam even said to me years later, he didn't know why he offered me an internship. There were so many others in the choir who looked better that he could have talked to. So he says that it must have been a God thing. Indeed, it really was a God thing. I had made a commitment to God I said I would serve him. I made all these plans for how I would serve him. But God took my offering and unexpectedly did so much more than I could have planned. My internship led me on a new path to church ministry. God placed me in, unexpectedly, the perfect situation. ECC would be the place that I would grow in my faith. I would learn how to serve God and relate to his people here. I met Eunice during my internship. We got married and we started our family. Years later, I would go to seminary and earn my master's in divinity during my time here. I was ordained here at ECC. In these moments, I have felt God's leading and the love of the community he has placed me in. This community has confirmed God's calling for my life. If I had leaned on my own understanding or my own way, I would not have taken this path with God. This unexpected journey was God's blessing in my life. And for this, I will always be grateful. Thank you so much, ECC. Which leads me to the question then, why, why am I leaving? 
Did something happen? This has been the question that has been asked the most by people when they came and talked to me. So in January, God brought me to a crossroad. We were led by God to pray about our future at ECC. Brothers and sisters, I just want to say again, I had plans. I was very comfortable in the place that God had placed me. Additionally, I was looking forward to a, a few new opportunities in ministry within ECC. Things looked organized and in place. But God gave us an unexpected change in call. This change was given to both Eunice and me. We were to close this chapter in our lives and to begin a new chapter. So did something happen? My response is this. We, were, we are being obedient to God's leading for the next step of our lives. There is no single incident that could cause us to leave. ECC is not a perfect church. In my years of ministry, there has been many conflicts and tensions. I felt that God has always called me to be in the midst of those conflicts and tensions as a peacemaker, to help bridge people who thought differently. This was my pastoral heart for the community. So there is no single conflict that would scare me away from being a pastor here. If God was calling us to stay, we would have continued to serve and do the work he has called me to do in this community. And quite honestly, I saw myself here for another 20 plus years. However, after our prayer, we felt strongly that God was calling us to go. And let me tell you, we struggled with this direction that God gave us. No church is perfect, but ECC has been the perfect church for me. I've learned so much working and serving alongside so many God-loving people. I've been blessed by the youth and the young people and serving them. Their honest and fervent faith reminds me constantly to not forget my first love. I've been blessed with a wonderful mentor, Uncle Victor. He and Auntie Betty are wonderful models of grace and love for me. Honestly, there's just so many people that come to mind when I think about all the friendships and relationships that we have been blessed with in ECC. ECC truly has been the perfect church for me. I was inexperienced and immature, but unexpectedly, God helped me to become a pastor for his church. So this has been difficult, to say the least. And even though ECC is perfect, when we became sure of God's calling for the next chapter, we too must follow him in obedience. Proverbs 3.5 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. I have seen time and again in my life that I must hold on to my plans loosely. I have to be ready to submit even my intended course and be ready to take the road that God is laying before me. I will trust in God. I will trust God on the plan he is taking, on the path he is taking me and lead not on my own understanding. Amen. I had a conversation with Pastor Sam before this was announced. Pastor Sam started his next chapter in his mid-40s as well. I'm not quite mid-40s, but I look it. Um, he said he could have retired at ECC as well, but he realized that by stepping out in faith into uncharted waters, it would be a chance for his faith to grow. As I considered what it would mean for, for my personal growth and also for God's kingdom, I'm reminded of this quote by St. Thomas Aquinas. If the highest aim of a captain were to preserve his ship, he would keep it in port forever. It was clear God was calling us to embark on the next chapter with him. So please know this has been both the hardest and easiest decision of my life. It is difficult because of the many 
loving relationships and friendships we have in this community. But we also have been so sure that this is from God that we have been resolute in following him in this journey, in these next steps, despite all the well-meaning objection of this loving community. So we hope our ECC family can understand we are not rejecting this church, but rather we are saying yes to God. Additionally, while we may be leaving this worshiping body, we are all still working and part of God's greater kingdom. We are all still on the same team. We still have the same goals that God's kingdom come and his will be done. So brothers and sisters, please know we are happy to still maintain friendships and relationships. But the reality is it just has to be intentional now. We can't count on just running into one another on Saturdays or Sundays. But we want to stay connected with you. We want to share the kingdom work that God is calling us to. And we want you to pray for us as we venture into our next steps with God. We need your prayer. We need your support. So finally, I would like to close with some parting shots. I, I mean, Elder Dan asked, said it would be nice to share some thoughts or insights for ECC to consider in our absence. So three thoughts came to mind. First, let me encourage you towards spiritual humility. Be ready to learn and see what God is teaching you. The moment we think we know everything that God has to say is the moment we become rigid in our faith. I have learned so much in these past 20 years from young people. Our youth and young people worship with sincerity and freedom. They're not worried about what other people think. They're not worried about pretense. They engage God with their whole selves. This has always been such a wonderful example for me. I want to I wanna brag on CG Core and their counselors. CG through the years have been a model of faithfulness for me. And especially now during this pandemic, they have not given up meeting together. They, take, they have prayer meetings, they plan movie nights, they do fellowship meetings all online. They meet together to talk about what it means for their faith as it encounters current events. They make, they make their faith relevant to their life together um, with one another and for the larger community to see. So I hope that um, we have these opportunities to learn from one another, which leads me to my next point. Our church theme is generation to generation, faith to faith, and life to life. And I'm sorry to say that I have often seen this theme interpreted from a top-down point of view, sort of a hierarchical view of, of a, a hierarchical theme, a hierarchical understanding. But I want to encourage you to think that this two is not only one direction. When we think of the two uh, in between each of these words, if we only think of it as one direction, we miss out on what God is doing among our young people as well. So let this theme, the two, let it be a two-way street of sharing and learning from one another what God has been doing in the lives of the people in our community. So that means young people, listen and learn from the experiences and wisdom of the older aunties and uncle. Older folks, talk to and see how God is moving and teaching our young people as well. Don't dismiss their views as emotional or immature. There is deep conviction among our young people. If you're not sure which group you belong to, it doesn't matter. Just listen to one another. Which leads me to my third point. Let's have true connection, true community throughout the generations and the lives within our church. There is no doubt that our church and, and Christianity in general has faced a lot of struggles in these past few years. It is important that we demonstrate what it means to be a spiritual family the Bible tells us that others will know we are Christians, not by our theology or, or political positions, but by our love. 
We must learn what it means to truly love one another, despite our differences. Let our connection be through God's perfect love and be reminded that we truly are all in this together. So these are my parting thoughts. I pray that God will continue to work in ECC and richly can bless this community. Now, this is my journey, but we all have our walks with God as well. So as we prepare um, to respond with the closing song, I just want us to, to consider uh, the lyrics of the song I chose. I chose this song because it reminds me of a God who goes before us when the seas are clear and calm, but also when the waters are stormy and uncharted. So I pray that this song will be our prayer and that it will ready each of us to follow God into uncharted waters. Through waters. Through waters and charted, my soul will embark. I'll follow your voice straight into the dark. And if from the course you intend I depart, speak to the sails of my wonder. Like the wind, like the wind, your guide, clear the skies before me, and I'll glide the open sea, like the stars, your
Jesus, my captain. Jesus, my captain, my soul's trusted Lord. All my allegiance is rightfully yours. We thank Pastor Bob for his message and for his encouragement and challenge to all of us. At this moment, we want to uh, do a a send up prayer for Pastor Bob and Eunice, and we've also invited Elder Victor, who is Pastor Bob's mentor. Let's pray. Lord, we want to thank you for bringing Bob to us and for his ministry at ECC for the past 20 years. We will always remember his friendship, fellowship, his inspiration, his counseling, teaching, leadership, mentorship, and pastoral care and love. Bob has influenced many here in our community with his love, his compassion, encouragement, wisdom, and commitment. Even though he does not know yet what plans you have for his future, he is willing to wait and remain ready and available to use his gifting for your glory. May your Holy Spirit continue to guide him, for him to walk faithfully, to lean on your presence, promises, providence, that this be his only support in his life as he moves forward in his new life journey. We ask, Lord, that he may find comfort, clear direction, strength, endurance, and perseverance as he seeks your will and purpose in his life. That he and his family will always know that they will always be a part of this ECC community. May you will be done in Bob's, though, and his family's life as they move in a new direction and always keeping their eyes on your son, Jesus Christ. Father, like Pastor Bob said, Lord, it's a God thing. It is a God thing that, Lord, he was led here some 20 years ago. And um, we believe that, Lord, it is a God thing as well, Lord, that you are leading him and uh, his family to the next chapter of their lives. Lord, we thank you for them, how you have used them here at ECC in such a big way and all the lives that they've touched. Lord, we love them. We don't want to let them go but we have to trust in your sovereignty. And so, Lord, we pray for them. Um, we, we thank you for them. We admire their courage uh, to trust you and to take steps of faith in obedience. We pray that you would bless them, Pastor Bob, Eunice, Noah, and Naomi, that you would provide for them, that you would guide them and strengthen them, that, Lord, you will use them in even greater ways for your kingdom. As an ECC family, we send them off with all our love and support. Lord, would you shower your blessings upon them tremendously. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please remain standing for the doxology. Praise God.
And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Thank you for tuning in, everybody. God bless you. Have a wonderful, blessed week. Jesus, my captain, Jesus, my captain, my soul's trusted Lord.